Hello everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today I'm sharing a few simple cards that you can create this spring. On the cards I'm making today, I'm going to be using the Spring Flowers Perspectives, some bees, and the Spring Paper Snips. I can't wait to show you how these come together. Today's project involves some very simple cards. I'm going to be using my shape dies to create the backgrounds and add some texture with this grid stencil. I'll be using these sweet little spring perspectives on my cards today. There are some lovely little florals and butterflies, and I'll bring in a few of these bees to my project also. For my sentiments, I'm going to be using the paper snips. If you are a card maker who doesn't like to stamp images, these paper snips make it so simple. All you have to do is cut out the phrase and add it to the card. As I create my cards today, I'll bring in a few additional supplies to the project, and I'll list those in the description below, along with a link to the Bramble Fox shop. I have already gathered the items for my first card, and I'm going to start by adding texture paste to the background. I'm using an opaque texture paste, which has a matte finish. You could also use a glitter paste or some crackle mousse if you wanted to, but I like the simplicity of the white on white. While the paste is drying, I'm going to cut out the butterflies from the paper snip sheet. If you are new to using paper snips, then you'll be happy to know that these are made of a sturdy cardstock like paper and all the images are beautifully printed onto the sheets. Each set of paper snips comes with phrases, icons, and some circle images that you can cover with the clear epoxy stickers to create little flare pieces. Now that the texture paste has dried, I'm going to place this onto some yellow gingham. This is going to pair beautifully with all the spring colors that I've chosen for this card. With a die, I cut out a variety of hexagons from pattern paper, and I'm going to place these on some foam tape and pop them up off the card. I selected patterns with a spring feel that were similar in color to the paper snips and the perspectives. Some of these are a more solid pattern, while others have some white in the background. I tried to select patterns that went well together and didn't contrast too much with the grid pattern in the back. One of the hexagons that I cut out is from the paper snip sheet. The little bee image was the exact same size as my hexagon die, so I cut it out and I'm adding it at the base of the card. Now I'm going to lay out the butterflies and choose a few of the floral perspectives to add next to them. At first, I thought I would create some little clusters with multiple flowers, but I like the simplicity of a single flower next to a butterfly image. The flower colors I chose are similar to the colors of the butterflies, and I'm just tucking these below each one. To adhere all of these in place, I just used some liquid adhesive. Glue dots also work well. You just need to make sure that you remove the backing from each of the perspectives before you adhere them in place. Since I have that little bee at the base of the card, I decided to bring in two more bees in the form of perspectives. These fill in some of the empty space and create some whimsical movement on the card. All that's left is to add a sentiment. I cut this from the paper snip sheet and backed it with some pink paper. Once this is added, I can finish it off with a few enamel dots. This design is so simple and I love how all the pieces go so well together. All right, let's go ahead and create another card with the perspectives and paper snips. For the second card, I'm going to create another texture paste background, but this time I'm going to mix some paint into my paste before I add it to the card. The shimmers paint is called Slow Ocean and it has a shimmery mint color to it. Once the paint is all mixed in, I can add it to my background. I'm going to cover this completely and create a solid grid design. If you don't want to use paste, you could replicate this look with ink or spray, or just skip it all together and use some pattern paper instead. 
I like the texture that paste adds to a card, and this color is so pretty. Once my paste had dried, I started to adhere my hexagons in place with some temporary adhesive. I'm going to be popping these up with foam tape, but it's much easier to lay them down first so that I can determine their placement before I adhere them permanently in place. The temporary adhesive is also going to hold these just long enough for me to trim the sides of the hexagons. This is difficult to do once they're popped up off the card. I wanted the card background to have more of a monochromatic feel, so I chose pattern paper with a simple leaf design in three colors. One of those leaves is a mint color that matches the background. Because these were all cut out using a die, I couldn't match up all the patterns exactly, but I did try to set like colors next to each other to create some directional flow down the card. On the paper snip sheet, there was this adorable little watering can with tulips, and that watering can matches all my other items so well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and add it to the front of the card. For me, paper snips are a huge time saver. As much as I like to create colorful images with my markers and watercolor paints, sometimes I just need to put together a card quickly without any stamping or coloring. These paper snips can also be used on your scrapbook pages, on tags, or little gift boxes. I sometimes don't add much journaling to my scrapbook page, so I use little phrases like this to help tell the story. To cut these out, I like to use a craft knife and a ruler. I have seen many others use a pair of scissors or a paper trimmer, but it's very difficult for me to cut a straight line with scissors, so I prefer to use the craft knife and ruler. You can use whatever method works best for you. Over the hexagons, I adhered two blue butterflies and brought in that watering can and laid a large blue flower perspective next to it. To match the tulips in the watering can, I brought in a pink sentiment that says Bloomin' Marvelous. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the two cards we created today. Both of these have a lovely spring feel and are filled with colors and patterns. I added some texture with paste, dimension with foam tape, and some adorable little spring images. I would like to know which one you like more, the simple white background, or the mint. Today's projects were simple cards created with dies, paper snips, perspectives, and a stencil. The designs are very simple and can be replicated using any of the pattern papers in your collection. I chose some pink, blue, and green for my designs, but there are plenty of other colors in that spring floral pack to choose from. I want to thank you for joining me for another project. If you would like to see more of my creations, you can visit my channel or follow Miss Carrie's creations online. If you have any questions about this project or the supplies I used, feel free to comment below. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to see what you create.